Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the In News series. I am Pooja and in this segment today we are going to discuss all about Hungary and Russian relations with respect to economic sanction. Why Russia is not coming out in support of the European Union when they are talking about energy sanctions over Russia to weaken the war. So this entire topic is very relevant with respect to prelims. The facts are important from the perspective of uh, analytical. The analytical part is more pertaining to the mains examination. And whoever of you have chosen political science and international relation, very important topic for you all. So let's move on and know the news. Now, Hungary is not backing the economic sanction that was proposed last week over the Russian government. And this was by the European Union. European Union was talking about trying to impose sanctions by phasing out European Union's dependence on crude oil over Russia. It gave the time of six months to every member of the European Union to phase out the dependence of uh, the countries of over crude oil. Uh, that so many countries are dependent on crude oil with respect to Russia, and also refined products. Refined products have a la longer gap, longer period or timeline with respect to phasing out. That is over one year. So Hungary is saying that it's not going to support this. Even uh, the European Union. Uh, representative went to Hungary to talk about that, but no agreement was reached. At. So let's talk about energy dependence of Europe on Russia. What is the energy dependence? Now, in 2021, two fifths of the gas Europeans burned came from Russia, huge amount, and over a quarter of the EU, EU's imported crude oil comes from Russia. In 2021, the European Union imported 108 billion dollar worth of energy from Russia and by far its biggest import from the country and of course because this is a very lucrative source for Russians uh, to fund their war this is the reason that they are doing but the volume of the EU it has been importing it has fallen significantly in the past decade in 2012 if we talk about European Union imported 173 billion dollar worth of energy from Russia and this graph will show you that how it is being done okay so for domestic production the european union it relies primarily on imports to meet its natural gas needs with respect to russia you can see russia has a huge role to play even in 2020 as well from 2010 to 2020 also africa and norway are one of its part the import the exporters of uh, natural gas to europe okay and you see that European Union trade with Russia by product group. You can see energy is the highest import of the European Union countries. Other than that, machinery and vehicles, very negligible part almost. Other manufactured groups, raw materials. But you see energy, the share of energy is so much. Okay, moving on. If we talk about the issue, the issue is with respect to putting on sanctions after the Russian war, you, Russia. Uh, it invaded Ukraine and after that European Union tried to restrict Russia's economy by promoting sanctions over it. So first is to cripple the Kremlin's ability fin to finance the war. That comes hugely from energy and imposed clear economic, also political sanctions on Russia's political elite or the oligarchs who are responsible for invasion and diminish its economic base. This is the, uh, this is the motive. Okay, and for energy sector, the energy sector is far fetched, banning exports of specific refining technologies and adding to the existing oil equipment ban from 2014 after the annexation of Crimea. It will make it harder and more costly for Russia to upgrade its oil refinery and hence no funds, no uh, funding of the war and a far reaching ban on new investment. So, new investment have also been shut down across the Russian energy sector with limited exception for civil nuclear energy and the transport of certain energy products back into the EU. So it is a very hesitant approach with respect to energy because you saw that huge market has been created by Russia and European Union with respect to energy. So Hungary's government has insisted that it will block any EU proposal, European Union proposal with respect to Russian energy. Why? Because the biggest reason is it is hugely dependent on energy and it is a landlocked country so it has a lot of issue with respect to getting natural gas and crude oil and other sorts of energy with respect to coal the hungarian prime minister did say that the hungary was even before this was very reluctant in providing any support to the proposal of the european union with respect to putting sanctions on russia 
Russia and he was saying that although you blocked uh, Russians, uh, you had Russian sanctions and blocked the supply of coal, it did not impact Hungary much. But if you are going to do this with respect to energy and oil and natural gas, this is going to be a red line. It's a red line that opposes Hungary's interest. Okay. And because Hungary gets 85% of its natural gas and more than 60% of its oil from Russia, this is a huge deal to Hungary. And blocking the sanction package could be used as a leverage in separating conflict between the Budapest and EU because right now European Union is also trying to reform Hungary with respect to the political structure, the, uh, because Hungary is a country that is becoming Russia in the sense that its political structure is almost similar to Russia. And it has denied uh, human rights to LGBT. It has also done its fidgeting with the judiciary. Many problems are there with respect to Hungary. So European Union is also trying to uh, take uh, on the corruption that is going on in Hungary. So first, that that is the uh, that is the problem that Hungary has with the European Union as well. And it is a it is the most friendliest of the countries that are present in European uh, Union. It has very friendly relations with respect to Russia. So, Eastern opening policy of Hungary came in 2010 with respect to the current government when it came into power and more bilateral meetings started with Russia and Hungary after this policy came into being. And there are similarities and there are very much similarities in how Hungary and Russian government works. Although not extremely similar, but they are very dependent on their oligarchs. They, are, they have the similar, almost similar political structure as well. Although it does not, Hungary, you see how many countries are there which are bordering Hungary. We have Romania, Ukraine, Slovakia, Austria, Slovenia, Croatia and Serbia. So, Hungary is not sharing its borders with um, Russia. Although it's not doing so, but, uh, but you see that it has a lot to do with Russia, very friendly with Russia. Okay, so there are certain, uh, what do you call it, uh, the misgivings that of the past here we are going to discuss. Uh, Russian troops defeated Hungary's uprising against Habsburg Empire in 1848-1849 and the Soviet forces squashed a popular uprising against the communist rule in 1956 and the decades between the 1945 to 1991, Hungary was a part of the Eastern Bloc. It did not leave many pleasant memories either. Hungary's public opinion data has shown that Russia yields a complex picture and some 35% of uh, polled Hungarians named Russia as their country's most important strategic partner, while only 13% named the United States. And 80% Hungarians supported their country's NATO membership and 78% uh, supporting membership in the European Union. So the nation seems to be firmly embedded in the institutions of the West. It's a mixed response. Citizens of Hungary are more in, inclined to the West, but the political structure, the political elites over there are inclined to the Russian Empire. So, Kremlin has been concentrated across the Hungarian political and the elitists. So, you see that is why whoever are in the power are more inclined towards Russia. Soft power is not very healthy uh, in uh, Hungary with respect to Russia. What is the compromise? Is only Hungary the one country that is not happy with this move? No. Slovakia and Czech Republic, they are also asking for a longer period of time when it comes to phasing out the dependence of dependence of these countries on crude oil uh, that Russia is providing them. So, uh, European Union is saying that we are going to help you with respect to getting your um, you back on your feet with respect to crude oil and energy supplies, but nothing as of uh, very concrete has been reached as of yet. So, the land of country, Hungary, has no seaport to receive global oil shipment as you saw and must rely on pipelines. This is the first issue. And the recent re uh, reduction in utility bills depends on relatively low cost of Russian fossil fuels. So, uh, the democratic structure, it rests on the public support, whatever there is. I mean, minute of the public support, no uprising. Any government does not want uprising in their country, however authoritarian there are. So, they want economy to be at least uh, stable. And converting Hungary's oil refineries and pipelines to process oil from non Russian sources, it would take five years because if they have to wean out or they have to phase out the dependence on Russia, they have to provide their own alternatives as well. If there is no investment, no funding with respect to getting energy supplies domestically, what will Hungary do? It will reduce employment, it will give rise to unemployment, shut down and hence we know whenever any economy is in the problem, something like what is happening in Sri Lanka is going to happen. Okay, so conclusion and conclusion is there. What is there? Hungarian diplomacy has consistently been critical of EU sanctions against Russia. 
so it's not painting a very bright picture for European Union because every country needs to um, nod its head when any proposal has to pass. So the new national security, but also the new national uh, security strategy, it was adopted in 2020. It emphasizes on the importance of NATO and ensuring the collective defense. Mixed sentence, mixed picture. And the Hungarian parliament election of 2022 will be of crucial importance because Russians, uh, the Russian government has their influence over the political class. So what the political class, if it gets changed, we have to see what is going to happen in the elections. Let's see the question. Critically analyze the policy of economic sanction with contemporary examples. You write it in two fifty words. So that's it for today. Tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment. Until then, stay updated. And thank you so much for watching.